Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillah rahim This video is uh, from Ideal Transformer, chapter number 13. And here we'll be solving example 13.8 and practice problem 13.8. Now we have already uh, learned this type of circuit. These are the actually two coils. And uh, as shown here, there are two coils and in between there's air or paper or whatever. And if the current, uh, this is connected to a voltage source, so current will flow through these coils. And because of the current, there will be magnetic field produced, which will touch the other coil and will induce a voltage in this coil. So, when we are dealing this type of a circuit, we have to take care of the uh, induced voltage. But there is another type of a circuit, looks very similar, but this is not the coupled coil, rather this is transformer. And we'll discuss this in the uh, coming slides. So, first of all, you have to distinguish the two. And this, if you recall, we used to write this voltage in terms of the impedance L1 and in, in terms of the coupling uh, impedance. And similarly for the other two, but in, in this case, we will not do. We have to also draw this type of a diamond shape, but in the uh, case of an ideal transformer, we will not do these. Let's see what we can do for an ideal transformer. An ideal transformer is actually represented by the iron core transformer. So these are iron strips and across on it uh, we wound the wires and so this becomes a transformer. And whatever is the magnetic field produced in the primary, the total field is coupled with the secondary. And so therefore there is no need of uh, um, this type of a box in, in the uh, ideal transformer. Now sometimes you might get confused what between the two circuit in which we have to use the diamond shape and in which one we don't use diamond shape. So it's simple if the coils are magnetically coupled, you can see this is the coupling, it is showing the coupling then we have to use the diamond shape and induced voltage. But if it is magnetic core, the two lines shows the iron core. If it is iron core, then this representing a transformer. And moreover, this shows the turn ratio of the transformer, one is to n. So in this type, a transformer, we don't use the mutual induced voltages as it was done here. Rather, we'll use the transformation of voltage and currents. And I am sure you are familiar with this formula. V2 over V1 is N2 over N1, which is written as N. Similarly, I1 over I2 is N2 over N1, which is written as N. But we have to be careful in using these when there are dots. So we have to uh, understand how to mark the polarity. So, this is uh, one of the uh, technique you have to remember that if V1 and V2 are both positive, like here, V1 is positive at the dot and V2 is also positive at the dot. Both positive or both negative at the dotted terminal, then we use positive N, like here. So V2 over V1 will write N2 over N1 positive or will also write equal to positive n. But in case of a current, it is slightly uh, different. If I1 and I2 both enter into or leave the dotted term, so like the current I1 is entering here, and the current I2 is also entering the dotted terminal, then we have something different for voltage. This is current, different, opposite. So we use negative sign for current in that case. So I1 over I2 will now be negative N2 over N1 is equal to negative N. 
and I have formed a simple technique for myself if you want to remember this that if voltage is same same that is positive positive or negative negative then we use n positive and if current same same then we use n negative another thing that we'll be using that is called reflected impedance so if this is the circuit we have a transformer and the secondary a load is connected so easiest way to solve this type of a circuit is to convert the load or bring the load into the primary side so we reflect the load into the primary side so our circuit will look like this now so this load reflected to the primary side will be called zr and the value of zr will be zl divided by n square number of turns square now this circuit we can easily solve so let's see the question now first example this is the circuit given we have to find current i1 we have to find output voltage v2 and we have to find the complex power supplied by the source so the first one to find the current we have to reflect this load to the primary side so reflected it will be zr and zr will be actually this load divided by n square n is 2 so it will be 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5 ohm and now since we have found zr we can easily solve for current voltage divided by total impedance voltage divided by total impedance and use your calculator in complex mode you will get the answer directly the current we have found now part b to find v naught we have to go back to the original circuit this is v naught and to find V0, we need to find I2. How can we find I2? If we know I1, then by the transformation ratio, we can find I2. Now, the only thing we have to keep in mind that, first of all, study the current direction. Current I is leaving the dot, and this current I is also leaving the dot. So, same, same, so negative sign. So, I2 this formula but be careful so we have determined that the sign will be negative current same same sign negative so i1 over i2 will be negative n which is equal to negative 2 and from here i2 can calculate we know i1 so this is the value of i2 now we can eliminate the negative sign by adding 180 degree or subtracting 180 degree from the angle so I'm adding here 180 so this will be the angle so the total value will be 5.545 angle 21369 this is current now multiplying by 20 will find the voltage so V out multiplied by 20 so this is V out so part B done now the complex power we have learned the power formula i hope you remember is v s i1 or v in i in whatever you call it so in, in our case v s or v source is 120 i1 also we had calculated this is i1 the only thing we have to change is because of this conjugate we have to change the sign of the angle so 120 current angle sign changed this is the answer we can convert this into kva so this is the answer in kva now come to practice problems similar exactly here only we need to find v out and the complex power the following same technique one point we have to be careful now that this is also included in the load not only this is load but 16 and uh, uh, J24 will make the load. So we converting this to the primary side, but before that we have to establish what is ZL. So ZL is 16 minus J24, and now we can convert to ZR for using the formula. ZL divided by now n is 4, so 4 square is 16. So ZR is 1 minus J1.5. And now we can find current easily from here. 
the current is 240 divided by the total impedance 71.5 angle 26 okay and to find v out we need to find i2 so same same formula you see the current is entering the dot and the second current is also entering the dot so same same negative sign for current we put negative sign solving and changing the sign with 180 degree added so this is the value of i2 and now v out is only the voltage across j24 so we'll multiply it by j24 so j24 multiplied by i2 j24 and this current so changing the sign uh, again here v and adding 180 or subtracting 180 uh, you get this answer so use your calculator actually to get this answer done now the power here also we'll just change this angle of i so 240 and 7155 changing the angle this is the complex power and converting into kva we get 17.172 angle minus 26.56 kva so i hope you have been able to follow this please let me know through your comments thank you